I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about you are not replaceable. Even if it feels like it. And it definitely feels like it at times. Oh yeah. You know, after a breakup, we are just so overwhelmed with a lot of different feelings. We're scared, we're angry, we're sad, we're confused, we're hurt, uh, we're jealous. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many different emotions come up and it's just like a carousel in our head more like a tornado really yeah. just round and around and you just get so overwhelmed by so many different things and you're just so hurt by everything that a lot of times you feel like that person never really cared about you or you question how much they really cared about you because you're like well if they loved me so much then how can they do this now mm -hmm. how can they just walk away now and give up so easily and so you kind of think to yourself well maybe they didn't love me maybe they never loved me maybe they were never really truly committed to this relationship and you know if you see them showing any interest in somebody new it really feels like they're going to replace you yeah and when we have such strong negative feelings our brain can convince us that that's the truth yeah and this is why this is such a struggle is once we get a phrase like that i'm replaceable they didn't care that can start to repeat in our minds and take over how we see a situation so we want to start out by saying that attachment is very unique mm -hmm. when you are attached to somebody you are attached to that specific person and it can it can be hard to think about things in that way because you think okay they're dating somebody new they just found somebody else to fill in that role mm -hmm. to fill in that relationship box to hug them to kiss them to tell them good morning but on a give them attention yeah mm -hmm. yeah on a biological level it doesn't work like that we have certain pheromones certain chemicals in our bodies that we release that our partner picks up on mm -hmm. when you spend enough time with somebody your body recognizes them as a safe person you begin to have this type of trust in one another mm -hmm. that just can't be replicated with somebody new right away. That takes time to build. So you are unique on a biological level and this is important in regards to attachment. Yeah, and if you notice, everybody has their own sense. Yeah, right? yeah, it's true. I <laughs> Vicky, <still> from men. <laughs> Or women. <laughs> if you've ever been to like one of your friends' houses when you were a kid, you, their house has a specific scent. You know, people's skin has a certain scent. So these things do make an impact. And your body recognizes who's safe and who's not safe. Your body emits certain hormones and certain chemicals when it's in fear, when it's around somebody who you distrust yeah. versus somebody that you have rapport with. And I think that hits us on a deep, level oh, in yeah. our unconscious mm -hmm. that will never be aware of those things mm -hmm. so i think it's really powerful in our bonding experience yeah I and mean, we can just hope that your ex's new partner is stinky <laughs> yeah got stinky pheromones their pheromones <laughs> are the worst okay <laughs> or that they're too genetically similar that the oh, yeah. body just like rejects yeah them. they'll have children with four foreheads <laughs> six eyes and a long neck that oh. looks like beaky buzzard and believe me he had a long neck. In fact, they called him Neck. <laughs> they did. They did. His nickname was Neck. There's nothing wrong with the long neck. He probably has some advantages too. You've it. seen some pictures. <laughs> Come on, you've seen that neck. He looked like he was mutated with a giraffe. Listen, you probably can see in certain angles that others can't. There's probably somebody out there that... Likes a long neck? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe it's somebody with a short neck and they just need that type of genetic advantage in a partner. What, how, what does the short neck do? It doesn't help you see over bushes for like lions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it keeps you more grounded. We could debate this all day. <laughs> okay, moving on. What's next for us? Length of relationship. Yes. Not neck. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> the length of the relationship matters. <laughs> We're going to get through this, guys. <laughs> They've all tuned out already. <laughs> but yes, the, this is important. <laughs> it is important because you're comparing uh, whatever kind of long-term bond you've had with somebody to somebody that they don't know. This new person is a stranger. You're, you've probably been with your ex for many months, if not years, mm -hmm. if not decades. And this is a person, if they started dating somebody new, that they literally know nothing about. And it takes time to get to know these people. And though they may put their best foot or neck forward, <laughs> it doesn't mean they're going to be able to sustain it. Yeah. Because in order to sustain those kind of attractive, healthy behaviors, you have to be truly confident. After a while, your true uh, insecurities are going to come out in your behaviors and you're going to become more anxious and selfish or avoiding and pushing your partner away. And all of those things are going to hurt the connection, but it takes time mm -hmm. to do that. So, you know, you, on the other hand, have been with this person for an extended amount of time, many special holidays or birthdays, milestones. Uh, I had a guy today that was with his girlfriend uh, through college and used to help her study mm -hmm. for all of her exams and she literally just had her graduation uh, yesterday. And so all of these major things come up. Bonding with family, friends, close people in their lives. You integrate and you become a part of their life, they become a part of your life. In fact, yesterday I had a call with a woman uh, who she was very close with her ex's family. Mm. And so she was talking to me about how close she was with his mother, the, his sisters, and she was like, I feel like I lost my family. Yeah. And you know, I felt like that too with the Applebee's girl mm -hmm. uh, because I was very close with her family too. So I know that feeling of you feel so close with all these people, you feel they're gonna be loyal to you in the breakup. And sometimes they are, but you gotta be careful. This is why I say don't reach out because it will make your ex upset. I've done it. Yeah. If you've lived with them, that's a major step to move in with somebody and share a space with them day in and day out, living together. Big commitment. Though That's another thing. Commitment. The level of commitment. Were you engaged? Were you married? Were you talking about having kids? All of those things are meaningful and they're big investments and it's harder to walk away from. Exactly. And we hear so often people who are threatened by their partner's new relationships, even after they've been with their partner for years or even married in some situations. Yep. And it's it's interesting from our perspective because we're on the outside. We can see how those two situations are completely different. But when you're in it, it's a completely different feeling. Mm -hmm. You see this other person as new, exciting, refreshing, a threat. But then we start to lose the value of familiarity of somebody who feels like home. Absolutely. Yeah. And you really don't know the impact that you make on someone's life. We talk about it all the time on the channel. In fact, we have some videos that are something about, you know, after 30 years, an ex reaches out. Yeah, 50. We had 50 yeah. one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the point of those is just to remind you that every interaction that you have with somebody has some sort of meaning. And so much more so when you decide to have a romantic relationship with somebody, when you decide to kind of let your walls down and be vulnerable with somebody, that does make a huge impact. Mm -hmm. And more times than not, we underestimate how impactful we are on other people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I want you to remember that, that if you feel like you didn't make a difference, if you feel like you're replaceable, you're just like anybody else, think about that. Most likely you are underestimating how much of a difference that you specifically made in their life. Bonds are very powerful, mm -hmm. okay? You just don't forget people that you grew a close bond with. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we touched on a little bit in the beginning, I believe. But that feeling of being replaced often speaks to childhood wounds. And we bring this up because everything comes from somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, if you find that this feeling of I'm replaceable, they can just find somebody else to fill my spot. If you find this feeling being pervasive in your life, it's normally because there's a reason, normally because it's familiar. Mm -hmm. And some of us did grow up not feeling like we were important really feeling that feeling of, okay, somebody else can fill in my spot. People don't really care about me. I'm not unique. I'm not special in any way. Yeah. We and, can get really sensitive in those areas. Oh yeah. 
This can happen when kids are abused. If you've experienced any type of abuse, we learn that that's the behavior that we deserve, that being treated poorly is what we get. It's matching the type of value that we bring to the world. And it doesn't have to be physical abuse mm -hmm. or emotional abuse. Neglect. Consistent neglect. I mean, if you think about it, somebody's neglecting your needs. They're not giving you your attention. They're not checking in on you to make sure you need anything. Uh, food, uh, you know, shelter, mm -hmm. love, affection, all of those things. If you're neglected in those areas, and your parents just let you go off and do whatever, you feel like you're gonna be forgotten. Mm -hmm. And it's correlated. We're trying to get you to see the correlation with that and what you're feeling now. Mm -hmm. And maybe even your parents treated you like you were replaceable. I know many of you come from homes with many, many siblings, and it can be really easy to feel replaced. Sometimes your parents forget your name and call you by your sibling's name mm -hmm. or you f have that feeling of, I know that, that happened I to me and I was an only child. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. <laughs> what do they call you, Greg? <laughs> Greg. <laughs> it's a callback. If you missed that other video, it's on you. <laughs> but you know, this does happen. Um, a lot of times with families that have many siblings, some kids grow up with that feeling of, I know my parent doesn't like me most, or they have a sibling that they favor. So being chosen over is a feeling that can stick with you from childhood. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen that a lot. Yeah. Where if somebody grew up constantly feeling second best to mm -hmm. a sibling, uh, it comes out in a lot of different ways. Yeah, yeah. And we end up re-experiencing these feelings in our adult relationships. So this is something that these patterns tend to repeat. It feels familiar. We might not feel like we're actively seeking out, but we stay in situations where we end up feeling things that we felt before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oftentimes we end up taking meanings from our breakup that makes sense to us. And if you grew up in these types of environments that we're talking about, it would make sense to think I'm replaceable. Sure. Yes. Because you've been hurt that way before. And so now, it's like you're sensitive in that area, and so it's easily easy to feel hurt in that way again in the present moment. So we really want you to understand, it doesn't mean your ex is coming back. There's no guarantees for that, okay? But you're not replaceable, okay? Even if the Applebee's girl moved on and got married three more times since me, which I mean, <laughs> let's face it, she deserves that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'm not replaceable, okay? You're not replaceable. They may find somebody else that they wind up being partners with, but it doesn't mean that they're gonna replace you, even though it can feel like that. And if you're feeling particularly sensitive about being forgettable or replaceable, you gotta reflect on that and do personal growth and look at whether or not it's because you've been hurt that way before and you're sensitive in those areas and you gotta work on that for your self-worth so you feel good about yourself and you're not getting triggered by little things that might make you feel replaceable or forgotten in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Remember your positive qualities, okay? Maybe you have a short neck and you're really proud of that. It's a great quality to have. Who'd want a long neck? <laughs> you have great qualities and your ex knows that because they were attracted to you and they had a relationship with you and they're not gonna forget those things and you gotta remember those things. Focus on your strengths. Look at the areas that you're struggling with or that you're sensitive at and try and get healthier in those ways and just understand that even if your ex does move on for whatever reason, you're not gonna be replaceable. Mm -hmm. Nobody is. Right, and this is not to say that there aren't some people out there that will treat you like that. You know, because there are certain personality disorders that that's the entire MO, using people and discarding people. But nine times out of 10 in situations, you do leave an impact on somebody. And in those cases that they do treat you like you're replaceable, that doesn't have anything to do with your actual worth. That has more to say about them than it does about you. Great point. Okay, so hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you wanna get our help personally, 
You can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you're ready. Just click on her name at the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.